So good evening. Uh, first of all, uh, I, you see uh, my th uh, the introduction is longer than my speech, so you see it get really older, and I can add a lot of these points on, on, on my CV. So it's really time to focus on things which matter, and so I would like to to skip my presentation because we have more distinguished guests today, and I'm mostly here to celebrate Daniela because. She, we are here in the Ledergasse, yeah, Lederstrasse, and and she was the one who made a dream come true. We have been working for 21 years for, for having a leather which you can compost, and because when you have normal uh, shoe leather, or yeah, you have 20, 40 grams of chromium per kilogram in it, and we have been, and you can reduce it to 39 grams or whatever, but that doesn't really make sense. So whenever 20% of the world chromium use is used for leather tanning. And we have been working on different leather technologies and because of her, Daniela's involvement in, in uh, the work with BMW, she put it on the market in the new BMW i3 has it. And that's a breakthrough of the leather which makes it compostable. That you can put it in biological cycle with exquisite qualities. It takes a long time that you need to look at things. Uh, we have been working uh, for more than 20 years to get a paper which you can compost. Yeah. When you take a normal uh, newspaper like uh, or magazine like Time magazine and you uh, burn it in your fireplace, the ash is so contaminated that it cannot go into biological systems. Yeah. Even if you want to grow vegetables with it, it took us more than 20 years. Now we have paper on the market which you can compost and there are some synergies uh, with the labels. We have been looking at labels for uh, mineral water bottles uh, that you can wash them off and, and use the sludge to grow shiitake mushrooms with it. But therefore, you need to choose all the chemicals which go into that. So maybe because we have distinguished guests from Australia, we could agree on Austria you know, as a language to talk together here. Uh, because in 2007, I was in, in Sydney and there was a conference and there was an American president there and said, uh, I'm so glad to be in Austria. Yeah. <laughs> because after seven years in power, he didn't know the difference between Austria and Australia. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then because he said Austria, Vienna, uh, yeah, he said um, uh, yeah, uh, OPEC. Yeah. And so he was opening the OPEC conference, but it was the APEC conference, the Asian Pacific conference. Yes. <laughs> And, but it was far better. It was far be better. I learned a lot from him because, he, because when this is your president, you know you have some potential as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so it generated so much more hope. So don't be too smart. And I only want to focus on a few things. Yeah. So I'm born here in, in uh, Schwäbisch Gmünd, and I was uh, just uh, just for the Aborigines here. Um, uh, my. Uh, my parents lived in Strasdorf here, and I nearly didn't make it to come here today because I looked for the place where my parents lived, and we lived there. And and you come to the uh, to, to the center, and there's a big poster which says Strasdorf, everything what your heart needs. Yeah. I said, okay, I stay there. Why should I come here? When there's everything, what yeah, every, alles was das Herz begehrt in Strasdorf. Also, why should I come here? Yeah can get everything there. So I would like to focus on a few things. Yeah. Uh, Schwäbisch Gmünd wants to be climate neutral. <laughs> yeah. And this is one of the saddest things. Yeah. First of all, they want to be climate neutral in 2050, when I looked at the climate plan. Yeah. This is amazing, because Copenhagen wants to be climate neutral in 2025. OK, in history, yeah, Schwäbisch Gmünd was pretty much more often in history far ahead than behind. But they want 25 years later, they want to be climate neutral. But then you, when you think about it, it's one of the most saddest things you can imagine. Because you can only be climate neutral when you don't exist. It's the only way. Yeah. <laughs> and so, did you ever see a tree being climate neutral? Just one? Yeah. So every tree is beneficial for the climate. Yeah. Since we want to be neutral, for that we have far too many people on this planet. So with all our brain, we want to be more stupid than a tree. It's amazing. Um, and so and this is, is, is what we talk about urban living. Amazing. Yeah. And I can give you a lot of these examples. You know, like people uh, want to 
it'll be low carbon, for example, the same thing. Did you ever see a low carbon tree? Yeah. Or they want to minimize their carbon footprint. Did you ever see a tree minimizing their carbon footprint? Yeah. So it was, yes, it's really amazing. Yeah. So we feel so terrible to be on this planet that we think it's better we're not here. I can give you an easy example where you can illustrate it. Uh, every day we need to pick up two grams of phosphorus, yeah, phosphate. Otherwise we cannot have bones, we cannot have teeth in our body. Yeah, we, cannot, we could only live like a jellyfish in the ocean. Yeah, we cannot store energy in our body as well. Um, so phosphorus is far more uh, critical than the energy side. Uh, because, because, can you imagine, uh, we only have phosphorus left for about 30 years. Yeah. And the, the phosphate rock is controlled by two countries, OPEC, has 27 countries, I think, for 40 percent. There are two countries for 70 percent of all the phosphorus. Yeah. And can you imagine? We think um, yeah, so. We take phosphorus from the environment. We eat it in, with our food. We put it back. But there is not one organic label which allows that our own feces can go back. Yeah. It's only organic without us. Yeah. So Baden-Württemberg is the center of organic food and. It's one of the saddest things because it shows we don't want to be here. Yeah. Uh, but you are evil anyways, and only God can be can redeem you. Yeah. So you only can be less bad. Yeah. But for less bad, we are too many. Yeah. So think about: we want to be good for the environment. We want to be good for uh, for the common economy. We want to be good for society. But when it comes to environment, the highest is not to exist. Yeah. This is sad. Because for that we are too many. By phosphate mining, we put a, just in Germany in the last 20 years, we put 15,000 tons of uranium into our agricultural land as a contamination of fertilizer. There's far more radioactivity going into the environment by phosphate rocks than it's used in all nuclear power plants. It makes leukemia for children, makes a lot of jobs, but does it really make sense? One of the worst things which we see, and we see it here as well, we take kid children as hostages when we cannot reach the adults. Yeah. Yeah, for example, there's a program where you get, uh, yeah, for saving energy at schools. So people uh, seal buildings to save energy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this sounds good, but first of all, the indoor air quality in an average uh, building in Germany is about three to eight times worse than outside urban air in Stuttgart. So when you now seal the building, you make the wrong things perfect. And then they are perfectly wrong. Yeah. Uh, and for the children, it's the worst, because we take them as hostages. Yeah. So when you do, we, they make these energy-saving programs, so we seal buildings yeah. <laughs> to save energy. We analyze the air quality in a school building, and we find about 2,000 ppm of carbon dioxide in the air, because the school kids want to save the planet. Yeah. <laughs> and so. They try to reduce the energy use. And when you have 1,000 ppm, the children already lose one third of their skills to learn yeah, one, at 1,000. Yeah. So it's like all totalitarian regimes. When you cannot grab the adults, we grab the children. Yeah. And it's not fair, because I can show you so many examples why it's not fair. Asthma is now by far the most relevant children's disease. When we seal the buildings, yeah, we don't get the moisture out of the building. We would have to go home three day, times a day to get the moisture out of the building, yeah, to ventilate the building. And this doesn't make sense. And then we are sealing our walls extra with PVC uh, uh, yeah, wallpapers so that we cannot get the moisture through the, the walls as well because we seal the walls as well. So why don't we make positive goals and say, hey, in 2030, the indoor air quality establishment in buildings will be better than outside air. Why don't we say in 2030, we will get the phosphorus back? So uh, the motto could be, give P a chance. Yeah, so Because 80% of the phosphorus is in our uh, urine, not in our solids. Yeah. So, so we can make positive goals. And don't try to be good in all the things, but don't try to be climate neutral. Because that shows, you look at the child and said it's better, don't exist. That's a clear consequence. And when you do so, then people, yeah, when you talk about overpopulation as well, when you do so, then you say, if you, it, you, know, you make people angry and greedy. You see this in Israel when you question the existence of people. You, know, 
Yeah, they said, hey, wait a minute, before you eat my lunch, I eat it. So even the poorest of the poor are always friendly, sharing, and generous when they feel safe, when they feel accepted. But when they have fear, yeah, they become angry. And we always see this here as well. We think the environmental question is an ethical question. But not only Germans who get ethical behavior immediately when they're under stress. So when you make an ethical thing, it's never there when you need it. It's only a quality thing. It's a design question. If you make a product which becomes waste, you're just a stupid designer. That's it. You're just an idiot. That's enough. Yeah. So you don't need ethics for that. A little self-esteem is enough. Yeah. So I did just a test with my students along in, in Rotterdam. I gave them some laser uh, tests. And I tried to find out where do the children, uh, where, where do uh, this, uh, people uh, do speed in the worst way? Yeah. Where are they speeding at least twice as fast than it's allowed? Where that is? In front of kindergartens yeah. and daycare centers for children. Because our children are not designed for industrial system. So your child has a little fever yeah, and wants to stay at home, but you are busy and you have a very important conference and meeting. Yeah. So we bring it to the kindergarten, and then it yells at you and say, ah, I don't want to go to the kindergarten. Daddy, why do I have to go to the kindergarten? I'm not doing well, you know that. <laughs> and then the child spits on your shoulder and you get really angry about it because you have a very important meeting. Yeah, you put your child in the hand of somebody and you run away and you feel terrible about it. And so you speed and you don't care because you're under stress that there are all these little children walking along. When you're in a traffic jam on a highway, you, know, you are, and you change the traffic, you know, the line from one to, lane to one to the, the other one, uh, you're causing 200 times more delay for the people behind you you know, than you can gain. But you don't care because you're under stress. So the first thing is to look at children and see what an opportunity to be on this planet. Not can you be less bad? Could you minimize, you know, reduce, avoid? You can minimize your, your footprint, for example, when you take the elevator in a building. It saves, takes five times less energy to take the elevator than taking the stairs. This is for vegetarian. So when you always want to minimize your carbon footprint, it takes the elevator. Yeah. And then you die a little earlier, you can minimize your carbon footprint even more. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we, you can do a lot of these things. Let's be positive. For example, when you eat oysters, yeah, there are six and a half million tons of plastic going into the oceans. Yeah, and not, a, not all is just plastic waste, it's as well textiles, yeah, because textiles are not made for biological systems. There are 20,000 chemicals being used in making textiles. <laughs> and so they abrade and they go through the washing machine and the river and then they go into the ocean. Yeah. When you want to do something for circular economy, uh, eat oysters. I can show you each oyster has at least 1,500 particulates of uh, plastic in it. 1500. So, and when you drink champagne with it, yeah, which is nice, yeah, you do something for the environment as well because champagne has much smaller bubbles. So, compared to Prosecco, it has three times less carbon dioxide emissions than Prosecco. So, when you want to minimize your footprint, champagne and, and circular economy by plastic waste, it's just oysters. Every oyster filters 60 liters of water yeah, every day. So with that, the particulates of plastic come back. Isn't it great? <laughs> you can do a lot of these things, like, for example, if you take an airplane, first go to the toilet, because then you can reduce your weight. If everybody does it flying to New York, this great city, yeah, <laughs> it saves five tons of kerosene. Yeah, you can do something. And, if, and, and people go to for shopping in these marvelous waterfront things. Yeah, yeah, they go shopping. If they fly naked, it would save another two tons of kerosene. Yeah. So this is why it's cradle to cradle. So I come to, to my cradle here. Yeah. And sure, it would be nice to have places where we actually celebrate a human footprint, which yeah, Daniela was talking about. Yeah. Uh, when you walk along the river Isar, your footprint means the water stays long in the meadow. Yeah. You prevent the river from flooding by walking along. So why don't we have a big footprint, but make it a wetland instead of minimizing our footprint? You can do something if, if, if men would wear high heels, so you could minimize their footprint, sure. But <laughs> does it make sense? So there's endless to do. If you cut your hair shorter, yeah, like Daniela does it compared to you, 5,000 liters of warm water, for example. So 
the, the basic question is here, yeah, and I have been discussing this, is famous Ursula Tischler here, a yeah, very great uh, professor in design. Um, when you take a lipstick, yeah, then a woman in Germany eats about 6.3 kilograms of lipstick, lipstick during her lifetime. Uh, this is completely inefficient, yeah, but very effective. Yeah. But we talk always about efficiency in all the urban development stuff, and efficiency is ugly. Efficiency means a tablet with some Schwäbisch Gmünd flavor and a glass of water. Yeah. Everything in life, what matters, is not efficient, it's effective. So instead of optimizing wrong things and makes them perfectly wrong, you need to ask what are the right things. And don't do everything, yeah, because then you don't do anything. So, and if you want to be climate neutral, I feel sorry for you. Yeah. If you don't understand that less bad is no good, it's just bad less, yeah. come, if you come home yeah, and you see your child and say, oh, today I will be child neutral, yeah. what an idiot, yeah? But we, we took all these terminologies now and we feel so guilty and we do with all the sustainability, we don't do anything else than little guilt management. Yeah. So if I ask you how's the relationship with your husband, yeah, what do you say, sustainable? Yeah. <laughs> then we're really sorry for you. Yeah. <laughs> Nachhaltig, in Dutch it's duresam, it lasts forever and it's expensive, yeah, so how oh nice. Yeah. So life is more than duresam, life is more than sustainable. So let's celebrate life. Let's look at child and say, welcome to this planet. What an opportunity for the planet. But this makes designers far more important. And right now, designers, mostly of them are just beautifiers. Yeah. So, oh, nice stuff, feels good. Yeah. And then they used something with it. Very naive, instead of really using a great experience what you have for positive yeah, and a beneficial footprint. But it needs designers in a sense which really want to have power, which want to have strength not just make a little change in some angle somewhere. Yeah. If you look at all this designer stuff, it's pure hazardous waste, never made for humans, never made for skin contact. We have in Heubach here with, with Triumph, we have been doing the first plaque for skin contact six years ago, before there was no plaque which you can put on your skin without getting ill. It's only a question of time. So we need to design the communication a bit as well about it. Because if Triumph says, oh, we have the first brass for skin contact, <laughs> Oh, wait, what did you befo do before? Yeah. So, but these designers look like all this black stuff, yeah, but they never asked what they put on their skin. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So, um, so let's reinvent everything. And in the urban society, the most important thing is indoor air quality. Second most is to get phosphorus back, because otherwise you are too many. Yeah. And then we can choose a lot of things extra which we like to do so. And then we really make a kaleidoscope of innovation and we learn from each other and we change. We reinvent everything to be good instead of less bad. Thank you very much. <laughs>